Hey guys, Jake here. Today we're going to replace the charge coil and ignition module in this 1989 15 horsepower Johnson. By the way guys, if you have not subscribed, please subscribe. We got a lot of great videos coming up ahead. So as you can see, the first thing you got to do is take off the cowling off this motor. And I'm just going to show you, for example, when you turn over this motor, there's no spark from either the top spark plug or the bottom spark plug here. Now, we kind of deducted that it wouldn't be the two ignition coils because what are the chances that both of them are going to go bad at the same time? So, the first thing we got to do is we have to take off this flywheel. And I suggest that you use an impact driver, not this method of a breaker bar because it's on there very, very tight. Now, we've had this flywheel off previously, that's why it looks like it's coming off so easy. But in practice, it will not. You will need a puller. Now, right there is the ignition module, and that is the charge coil. And we're going to replace both these parts. As you can see, all you have to do is just use a flathead screwdriver and take off all the screws holding down these parts. There's a little spacer, make sure to not lose that. And I'm going to take off this coil, and you can see, I think the coil was my problem. You see there's a bunch of goop that's been leaking out of the coil. Probably got overheated or something, and I think that's the problem. However, I bought both the ignition module and the charge coil, so I decided just to, you know, replace them both, because when's the next time I'm going to get this flywheel off? Now, to disconnect the ignition module, you have to disconnect the wire that goes to that kill switch and you have to disconnect the ground wire on that coil and I just you gotta also take off those two wires also connected to the coil which are also a part of that power pack ignition module you're gonna take those off and basically the entire charge coil is disconnected from the engine except for this base bottom plate right there and in order to take that off, it's just a bunch of Phillips screwdrivers, super simple, easy. And the entire system will just come off in one piece, as you can see right here. Now, to take off the ignition module from that base plate, you're going to have a little plate holding the wires in together. You're going to poke all the old wires through that hole, and then you're going to get your new ignition module, which is right there. And you're just going to do the exact reverse steps, making sure not to damage any of the new connection ends, because that would be a shame, because this is not a cheap part. And as you can see, feeding it through, and once it's fed through, you're going to have to make sure that you line up the correct amount of wire, so you're not left with too much wire hanging out, or too little wire hanging out when you tighten down this ignition module down to that base plate. Once you figure that out, you could clamp it down, with that little plate there and that part is ready to go right back onto the engine after you take the little rubber connector off of the old module and put it onto the new module being careful not to bend that little plug too bad and as I said before now this whole part's ready to be just assembled right back onto the engine and as I said, it's the reverse steps. You put that base plate back on. Very nice and simple. And next, I'm going to route the cables back around so I can connect this new ignition module right back up to the engine. Make sure that the two wires that go to the ignition coils, the one on top is the blue wire, and the one on the bottom is the green wire. It's an orange and green wire and an orange and blue wire. Then again, just connect up your ground cable and that's a simple feat. You just put that right back up, ratchet it back on, and also connect up your kill switch to this, which is right here. And that's simple enough. They just pop in, very nice and simple and easy. Then we're back up top to put on this coil. Now the coil has two wires and they do matter which wire goes to which and they're color coded accordingly so there's really no way to mess them up. And once you get them in the right configuration, 
you're just going to reassemble everything. Take back all those screws you set aside, being careful not to lose them, of course, and, you know, tighten everything down. They don't need to be, you know, crazy tight. They just need to be nice and snug. There we go, putting the flywheel back on. With the flywheel down, we could finally test to see if there's a spark, and there we go, we got a spark. And now, you're going to want to torque down this flywheel to the right specifications. This is not the right way to do it. You're never going to be able to hold down on that flywheel. I suggest using a strap wrench. Hey guys, thanks for watching. All the products used in this video will be linked in the description for you to easily find. And if you enjoyed this video, please give a thumbs up, please subscribe, and please comment below how this repair went for you. Thank you.